Hey everyone, welcome to another video tutorial. This time we'll be going over creating a player class for your game. So you're going to right click on your project up at the top and you're going to go to add and then class. And you're just going to call this one player. And here we have the player class starting like this. So what you want to do first off is copy all of these usings, um, all the Microsoft using ones. And then just put them in here. Because when you create a new class, they're not done automatically. So this is our player class in here. And what you want to do in here is make a public player like this. And two brackets. So this is your default constructor for your player. I'm going to call that default constructor. So basically, when you create your player, anything that's in here is going to be initiated. So if we do a vector 2 and position and we do position is equal to new vector 2 and then give it a position of I don't know 50 and 50 then when we create a player its position will automatically be set here if we don't do anything and for our methods we're going to have an update so we're going to have a public void update and in our update method you're going to have like everything you want to do every single frame and you're going to have a public void draw method and everything in here is going to be basically what you want to draw so just to draw update and so we have a position um, what else do we want to do we want a rectangle player rectangle like so and in here we want player rectangle it's equal to new rectangle and then we pass through a if you click down here it tells you the, the stuff you need to pass through so you pass through a position X a position Y a width and a height so you're gonna pass through position dot X position dot Y and then a width and a height of whatever you wanna call it like so I think I have a player thing called 128 in width and 128 in height so it's a bit big, so I'm just going to do 64 and 64 half of it. And oh, what's wrong? Can I convert float to an int? So you can just do cast it to an int like that, and it and that should work. I'm pretty sure. And some oh, okay, never mind. I know what's wrong. <laughs> you want to cast the positions to an int. This here, this should be an end. I'm pretty sure this is it. Yeah, there you go. So you want to pass them to an int first. But if you just put in normal coordinates, it will be as an int, like if a uh, provider is no decimal point on it. So you have your position, you have your player rectangle. So in here, in our update, we want to detect some movement. Actually, no, let's just get a drawing first. So you want to pass through sprite batch and we we'll call it just sprite batch again, but lowercase. And in here we're going to do sprite batch dot begin. We're going to do a sprite batch dot end. And then in here, wait, actually first we're going to make another method. We're going to call it a public void. And we're going to call it load content. And it's going to take in content manager content and it's going to pass through a string with name. And in here we're going to do a texture 2D. So we're going to make a texture up here. Texture 2D, and we're going to call it player texture. 
So basically this is what's going to be drawn on a rectangle is their player texture. So we're going to go to player texture is equal to content, which we're passing true, which is here. Dot load, then the type, it is texture 2D, and then in brackets, name. Like this, because we're passing true name in a string. So this is how we first load our player in, is through this method here. So we'll just comment this, loading the player in, loading the player, that'll do. And then in our draw, we have a begin, we have an end, so we want to put something in between these two, which is draw, just like this, just draw. The argument is a texture 2D, so it's just player texture, a rectangle, which is player rectangle, and then color dot white. Now white makes it basically the color it is. Like if you pass through, if you have an image that's black and you pass through color dot white, the color will be black. Like it doesn't alter the colors at all. That's the way color dot white works. So yeah, so we're basically ready to go now. So if we go back to our game class, and in here we do a player, and we call him player in lowercase like that. And then in our initialize, we will do player is equal to new player and then double brackets like this so what these double brackets do is it basically tells uh, C sharp and X and A to go to the default constructor for player which is this one here so it'll pass it'll give its position the 50 50 and it'll pass through its rectangles and then in our load content we want to do player dot load and we want to pass through the content manager um, which is content one second, I think it's just content isn't it? yeah, just content and then the string name which will be I think it's just player I think that's what I have it called as this player. So we're going to go to our game content here, the part where it says content. We're going to go add existing item, and you're going to find what you have to add. And I think I have one called yeah, player png. Cool. So that's our player there. That's going to pass through player, and then in our draw, we're going to call player dot draw. And we're going to pass true sprite batch. Perfect. So we have our sprite batch passed through there. So if we draw this now, we might get an error. I think that player might have to be player.png. No, it isn't. So there's our player right there. So as you can see, when you're passing true, it's just the normal content that the game has. Like here, content that root directory is equal to content. So you pass through this variable and you pass through the string name which is your asset name which is here and you leave out the extension which is like .png, .jpg, whatever so you leave that out and then in our draw method all you have is literally player.draw and that's it because usually you see now you might need a sprite batch .begin, a sprite batch end, but it goes into the player.draw method and it searches for a begin and an end and it finds it um, yeah, so that's why it's able to draw that. So for now we want to put in some keyboard input to move our player around. So we're going to go to keyboard KS, I guess. Enter update, we're going to do KS dot... Oh no, actually, it's keyboard state, I think. Keyboard state KS. And we're going to make a if statement. So we're going to go if ks dot is key down and then keys dot whatever key. So we're going to say keys dot right, which is the right arrow key on the mouse. So if keyboard keys dot is right, then we're going to do play, we're going to do position dot x plus equals 10 so that's going to move us right 10 pixels at a time 
when you hold on the right key. And if you don't know what this plus equals is, it's basically the exact same thing as writing position.x is equal to position.x plus 10. Both of them do the exact same thing, but it's just a lot shorter just to write plus equals and 10. Like that, and that'll move it. So we can just go back to the main here. And in our update method in the main game, we're just going to call player to update. Just like that. And that's all. So once we press the right key now, it is not working. <laughs> So let us find out why. Um, keyboard dot ks dot is key down. Yes, that should work, <laughs> but it's not. Give me one second. I think it's here. In this one, what are we missing? Yeah keyboard dot get state. I knew there was something there that we we're missing. So you need to do ks dot oh. why isn't it here? Keyboard state ks is equal keyboard dot get state. Yeah. So we can Take this out here. Yeah, I was wondering why that wasn't working. Yeah, so what this is is it gets the state your keyboard. So basically, it detects, it detects keyboard input. Sorry, but that just completely slipped my mind right there. <laughs> I knew there was something else yet to do. So if we go in here now and we press keys is right, it should work. And I'm not sure if you guys saw that happening. But it was. So like for my game here I have if ks dot is key down, keys dot a and it makes like the model rotate or whatever like that. So basically that's how it works. Um yeah. So it should be pretty okay on what we're doing. So we can do player rectangle dot x is equal to position dot x and player rectangle dot y is equal to position dot y. So yeah we need to cast this to an int and cast this to an int. So basically what was happening was our block was actually moving but it wasn't updating its position to draw. So basically it was detecting our keyboard input but it wasn't updating it. So what this does is it actually updates updates player position or player rectangle based on the player position. So now if you run it, it should definitely move, yes. And you can see it moves. So to make it move left, we're gonna copy this code exactly here. And we're gonna go left instead. And instead of plus equals in 10, we're gonna minus equals 10. So just comment this, move left, comment this, move right, and we're going to do an up and a down. So this one is going to be up, and this one is going to be down. If I can only spell. And you're going to change your Y. To move up, it's minus, and to move down, is plus. And the reason that is, is because 0, 0 is the top left corner of the screen. So when you move down, it moves down this way. So you're plusing it. So if you press up, it moves up. And down. We forgot to change this to a white. So now we should have four movements, yeah. Which we do. We have a moving left, right, up and down, everything like that. Which is cool. It's a pretty simple thing just to get going at the start. Which is your keyboard input. So if we want to make it jump, um, I'm pretty sure we can do that in the next tutorial. So I shall add that in. Let me just comment this for you guys real quick. Movement down. And movement up. So that's basically the essential is to making a class and 
making it nice and tidy with everything like this and if you ever wanted to get like the player position or anything you would make a getter and setter for it which you would call like public and then the type of whatever it is so your position is a vector 2 and you would talk, call it position with usually a capital to what the variable is called so our variable is called a lowercase position so you would call it a capital position and you make it like Nope. Player position, and in here, then it should be get position. Uh, get, and then embraces return position, and then it's set, and then in here, position equal to value, and curly brace. And that's all there is to a getter and setter. So basically, if you ever want to access the player position, you see, usually you would make these private variables. So you do private vector two position. So when you go in here in your player, in your main game class, and you try and look up for your player position, you can do player dot position, and like your normal position, actual vector isn't there. Whereas if you make it a public, like this. See, it's there. Your position is there. Your actual vector too. But it's kind of it's very bad to do that to make everything all public. So you make them private and you give them getters and setter methods is what they're called. So just player dot position then, and then you would just get like dot x or anything. You access it the exact same way. So it's pretty handy to do. So I'm gonna leave that tutorial there, guys. Thanks for watching and please leave a like and comment if you liked it. Thanks.